Hey Big Jackpot Winters, today we're going to discuss something sometimes seen as controversial. And that is, is the field a sucker's bet? So let's, let's talk a little bit about the field. All right, on, on the surface of it, when we look at the field, people look at it, this looks great. It's easy to reach, it's right there. It's right there at your touch. And look at all these numbers we're covering. And two of those numbers are paying double. How can this not be an amazing deal? Well, let's talk through the logic of it. <coughs> and since craps is a game of math, let's talk a little bit about the math of it without going too deep into the math. So on the surface, let's talk about it. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. See, there are seven numbers that you can get paid on. And how many numbers can we not get paid on, right? We're looking at a five, right? We don't get paid on a five. You know, that's like uh, sitting there hiding in the space there. We don't get paid on a six, and we don't get paid on a seven. So when you look at it, it's like, phew, wait a minute, I'm getting paid on seven numbers, and I'm not getting paid on three numbers. How can this not be a good deal? <clears throat> now, one part that a lot of people forget about in this scenario is you also don't get paid on that seven, but we're, we're, not, gonna, we're not gonna dig too deep into that yet. All right, so we know that we have a total of seven numbers we're getting paid on, and we have a total of, what was that? Three numbers that we're not getting paid on, right? So seven versus three, it seems like a great deal, or make it seven versus four, whichever way you wanna look at it, right? <clears throat> Either way, we're in this scenario, let's, now let's walk through the logic behind this, right? How many ways are there to make a two? And if you happen to know the game of craps, the answer is there's one. That is, uh, that is very glary. Let's see, can we, how about that? Yeah, you can still roughly see that. There is one way to make a two. How many ways to make a three? Two ways, two ways to make a three. How about a four? How many ways can we make a four out there in the game? We can make a four three ways. How about that niner? All right, that niner, we can make it four ways. That's awesome. That 10, well, 10 and four are the same, therefore 10 and four can be made three ways. 12, the 11 is just like the three with two ways, and finally, the 12 is just like the two with one way. And when we add all that up, we have 14 ways, <coughs> right? Let's do some basic math there. What's that, six? That's, a, that's another six. Wait, is my math on that right? <laughs> Wait a minute. That's three, that's six, that's 10. 13, 14, 15, 16. No, that's wrong. 14 is not the one I'm looking for. It's actually 16, sorry. 16, we have 16 ways. I forget why I had the number 14 out. We have 16 ways that we are able to make the field, right? There's 16 different, 16 different combinations of dice that will pay us. So now we're gonna jump over to our good friends that we are talking about before, right? Our good friends of five, six, and eight. And you would, when you look at those on the surface, right? Five, six, and eight have 14 ways. That's why I have 14. 14 ways to make five, six, and eight. But when you also include seven into the fold, there's our good old friend seven, the reality is we actually have 20 ways. So 14 gets thrown away, and there are 20 ways to lose on the field, and only 16 ways to win. So in the grand scheme of things, you might be saying, okay, this is actually a terrible deal. Mathematically, right? According to the math, it's going to be against your favor to try and make any of these bets. So why is the field often so prominent and big and exposed? Well, because the math says, hey, you're going to, you can lose more ways than you can win. But... Why do we have systems like the Iron Cross and the Iron Gauntlet and all these other derivatives and variations of systems that allow us to play the field while playing other numbers? And the reality is because uh, A, we love the field. And B, the field is mathematically 20 over 16, right? 20 is greater than 16. It's mathematically, quote unquote, a sucker's bet, but it, for the rest of us, see it as an opportunity bet. So when we look at that in the grand scheme of things, if I'm covering the five, six, and eight, um, that get, that's covering three num yeah, there we go. That's covering three numbers in play for me. 
Um, so if we are on a positive table where we think good things are going to happen, we can cover our five, six, and eight. And then as a result, cover, what are we looking at? What was that? Seven numbers? We can cover seven numbers for the price of one bet in the field as opposed to having to make seven individual bets. Now, if you use the field like I do in an iron cross to, or an iron gauntlet to pick up all the rest of the numbers I did not have, then that is where this opportunity starts to expand. So if we were to pick up a four, we pick up our nine, and we were to pick up our 10, we throw those three numbers away, and all we're left with is four numbers. In those scenarios, it makes the most sense to maybe not play the field and rather invest those dollars over into a horn bet, right? Because for, let's see here, what would be a field bet that pays, you know, 10 pays 20, I could do the equivalent of a uh, of a horn bet where eight is going to pay, what is it? Well, we'll treat it like every two dollars. Two is going to pay 30 or uh, two is going to pay 60. So in a way, you can actually win a lot more money playing the horn at that point for the, the same or actually 20% less of a wager than you would be playing the horn bet. Now, which brings us to, wait a minute. Uh, at the field bet we all know is a sucker's bet. The horn and any number, any bet on the inside of the table is an absolute sucker's bet. And that's what they say. Again, the math plays out to us. What do we have? A total of uh, six ways we can possibly make those horn bets. But I'll tell you, I'll, I'll take six ways to win a lot more, and especially if I'm already at that point covering the four, five, six, eight, nine, and ten. I may as well for a much smaller footprint, being able to pick up those other ones. Will it make me stop playing the field? Not necessarily, but it definitely gives us that opportunity to take advantage of an opportunity that's presented to you, <coughs> right? You can use the field in the case of an iron cross to pick up all the numbers that you happen to be missing. You know, you've got uh, the nine hits, right? Uh, you know, boom, we go over there and the nine hits. We then pick up a nine. The 10 hits, we pick up a 10. And once we fill in all our spots, a four, a nine, and a 10, at that point, we take our investment we would have been making into the field, and then we toss it out there into the horn, and life is good. So it's up to you to decide. We know the math does not favor the field bet. You know, 20 over 16 is the, is the truth of that. Um, but if you feel, really feel like, even if you believe, you know what, there's seven numbers, seven numbers is better than three, or four numbers. The truth is it's not, but who cares, right? If you got a hot table and they keep throwing twos and twelves, well, you get your horn bet at that point. <clears throat> but if you have a hot table and they keep throwing field numbers, get paid, but make sure you pick up those numbers, cover those numbers so you can get paid twice and you can come away from this thing a winner. So I don't know, let me know what you think in the, the comments below. If you think the field bet is a sucker's bet or it's the greatest opportunity for you to win big in the casino.